Thanks for joining. Um, today's press set will be in three parts. We'll start with the broadcasts, then move on to the dailies and Sundays. If you'd like to ask a question, please use the wave function. We'll then promote you and give you the ability to unmute yourself. We're going to start with Sky Sports News, and that's Paul Gilmore. Hi, Frank. Hi. Hi, Paul. Frank, how much are you looking forward to welcoming supporters back to Stamford Bridge after the Prime Minister's announcement this morning? And how ready do you feel the club and football is for that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very excited to, to welcome our fans back. Not just our fans, I think we all crave, um, in the country we've been craving fans to be back at games, uh, for the atmosphere, for what it means to the game here. Um, and obviously, if and when done in the right way, with the right precautions, I think football will... Um, from being within it uh, has, has made some really good steps in difficult conditions over the last few months and hopefully we keep making forward steps and we get our fans back in the stadiums. They obviously won't be there for the big game this weekend at Wembley. How, how is the squad injury-wise and, and how do you stop this United front three and Bruno Fernandes? Uh, the squad's okay. N'Golo Kante won't be fit for the match. He's still um, not right, so he's out. Um, other than that, we have a few people with a few little niggles, which we're on monitor over the next um, 24 hours or so. Um, and then we um, will be ready to go. Um, we know they're playing well. They've got a very, very potent front three, the most potent front three probably in the country, on pure numbers anyway, in terms of goals. And obviously, Fernandez has made a huge difference coming in January. So you see that the strength has brought to their team with individual qualities so but we know that we have to um, be confident in ourselves deal with their threats and, um, and worry about us as well How's Ziyech settled in this week uh, this week with his new teammates? Yeah Hakim's been here for, for the week trained a couple of days on his own and then he's integrated a bit with the team so very well um, the lads have welcomed him very well he's settled in and, and chatting and you know, making those forming those new relationships in the early stages and, and more importantly for him, getting himself fit. Nice to take a bit of part in training and then also get some physical work because he hasn't trained uh, or played for quite a while. And just finally for me, generally speaking, the, the transfer dates, uh, the transfer window dates are now known. Uh, generally speaking, do you think we'll see similarities to Chelsea spending that we saw in Abramovich's first season? In other words, will, will there be significant business that, that can have the potential to transform an entire team ahead of next season? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I can't, I can't answer that one. We're not there yet. We have to focus on what's in front of us. Um, and we'll see. I wouldn't want to compare it to any other spending summer or not. Um, we'll see how I feel and we feel as a club. The squads need strengthening or, or the balance needs changing. If it does, and we make moves great. But at the moment, we don't know. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Moose at Sport. Hi, Frank. How are you? Hi, Moose. Um... I've been doing some homework, actually. I've been doing some research ahead of uh, catching up with you. And I found out that Roberto Martinez is the last player to have played for the same club he then managed to win the FA Cup. But prior to that, there was two Chelsea managers. Do you know who they are? Um, Viali and Hullet. No, Viali and Di Matteo. Viali and Di absolutely. Are you, going to be, are you going to join that illustrious list? Well, but Manchester United in front of us and then Man City or Arsenal in front of us after that. So um, there's a lot of work to do to join the illustrious list of two. <laughs> I did it as well. Um, in all this, this is big for you, isn't it? I know you've got massive games against Liverpool and Wolves to try and get a top four and, and that might be dominating your thoughts. But, but in terms of winning a trophy, I mean, your old manager, Jose Mourinho, always wanted to win a trophy straight off a new club and I, I guess now you're within sight within touching distance you'll want to do the same yeah of course we do of course we do at Chelsea and uh, considering where we are we're in the semi-final we know what's in front of us um, and the league is obviously huge as well as you say but you, at this point you fight on two fronts um, in terms of on the domestic front um, and we have to give everything to try and do that you know a club like Chelsea will, will, will always want to win these kind of trophies it's what we've done pretty well actually very well in the modern era um, and of course, it feels like we're in a slightly different position this year because of um, the circumstances of the season. But we have an opportunity and it's up to the players and ourselves to uh, to make the best of it on Sunday. But we're playing a very good team, Moose. We know that. They're in good form. And whoever would await us in the final it would be a very good team. So the work is to be done. And one last one. You've obviously stated, I think everyone states the fact that what Boris Johnson said about 
fans coming back is, is welcome. Do you think it will improve the product on the pitch? Because there have been some critics of your game the other night against Norwich and, and plenty of other games. I went to Spurs Everton, which was hardly a great watch either. Do you think the fact that the players will feed off the fans coming back in? Yeah, maybe, but I think it's a bit harsh. I think we've all sat through some pretty difficult games to watch with 40,000 in the stadium as well, wherever it be in the country. So I think we're probably focusing a little bit much on it. But I think naturally, I think with fans, with the uh, the atmosphere that they bring to the game and the, and the edge that they can maybe give it, we, we might see something different. But to be fair to the players in this period, we're short on fitness probably at the start of these games, coming to terms of the circumstances. I think the game, you know, the games have been pretty good uh, in a big sense. Um, and, and, and hopefully they will improve, of course, when the fans are back. Thanks, Bruce. Nick Puel, PA. Hi, Frank. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said um, that he thought the way the scheduling had happened, the authorities had given uh, Chelsea an unfair advantage for this game this weekend. I know, obviously, he was talking about the authorities, so that's not your problem or your making. But do you think that's valid? Do you have an unfair advantage this weekend? No, I don't think we do. <clears throat> I think we've played Saturday, Tuesday this week. They've played on uh, Monday and Thursday. So we both played two games in this week as it stands. Um, we're in a period where we're playing games all the time, very regularly. And um, you become play, recover, uh, play again, recover, you know, and, and you work with the squad as it is. And um, it's, it's an age-old question. A lot of managers, you probably dig out times when I've mentioned it, but at the same time, it isn't about advantage or not. Sometimes it works in your favour to be playing regularly and ticking over. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I don't see it. Okay, last question in this section, Tom Hamilton, ESPN. Hi, Frank. Um, I'm just wondering on Christian Pulisic, what sort of improvements have you seen this season? Where perhaps do you want to see him grow, I guess, over the next year or so? And um, what do you hope to see from him at the weekend? Well, I've seen um, real improvement in him, um, in his all-round game. I think coming to the Premier League was very difficult because of the physical nature of the league. And, and we have to remember how how uh, young Christian is and also the summer that he'd had. And um, I think he found those physical demands pretty strong in the beginning and now you're seeing him deal with those better. I think a lot of that can be credit to himself and how he's approached it. He's worked a lot with our uh, strength and conditioning coach, Adam Burrows, um, who's fantastic, but they've worked together. So it's Christian that has to take on that responsibility and he has. And I think physically that's helped him. Um, but also just his talent is coming through. I want probably looking forward to probably see yeah, you know, more of what he's showing in recent time, which is goals and assists, because that's what the best in the world do in that position. I feel he has the capability to do that as he improves. Um, and yeah, that, that for me can be the edge as, he, as his game goes on and moves on levels. OK, that's the end of the broadcast section. So we'll turn the 